Hello and welcome to this tutorial on making a pop, rock, or country band in a box user track in less than 10 minutes. I'm going to take you through the few simple steps to making a user track. First, though, I'll just explain a little bit about Band in a Box and explain just what user tracks are. Band in a Box is an auto accompaniment program that lets you create backing tracks for any song in any style just by typing in the chords, picking from over a thousand possible styles, setting the tempo, and pressing play. And that's exactly what I've done with this song. I just typed in these chords, picked this style, set the tempo, and press play. All of these instruments you're hearing were then created based on my chords. They are real tracks, which means that they're real instruments played by real musicians and can play over any chord progression you enter into Band in a Box. Now, new with Band in a Box 2014, we've added user tracks. These are like real tracks, but you, the user, can create your own. You simply record your own instrument, and Band in a Box can then use that over any chord progression in Band in a Box, just like the real tracks. And with this track, that's exactly what I've done. I created this ukulele user track myself in under 10 minutes. There are many great ways that you can benefit from user tracks creation like this. Number one, you can use your own user tracks as songwriting tools, playing your own grooves, but being instantly able to change the chord progression, keys, tempos, etc. as you're writing. You can share and trade them with other Band in a Box users using the pgmusic.com forum. Or you can sell user tracks as a third-party product that can be used in Band in a Box or Real Band by customers. So now I'm going to go back in time a bit and show you exactly how I made this ukulele user track. So I'm about to make a ukulele user track and the steps of making user tracks include Step 1, downloading our one minute user tracks template. Step 2, picking the style and tempo you want to record at and giving your user track a name. Step 3, playing and recording your instrument playing over a short simple chord chart. Step 4, saving your file in the correct location and format, at which point the user track is finished and then you can go to step 5, use your completed user track. So step 1 is to download our one minute user tracks template. You can either get these from your Band in a Box folder by default C, BB, Real Tracks, User Tracks, User Tracks templates, or you can download them from our website. Either way, they're in a zip file which you have to extract to CBB Real Tracks User Tracks. This may be in a different location if you didn't install to the default location. For example, if you installed Band in a Box to D colon Music Programs slash BB, you would put the folder in D Music Programs slash BB Real Tracks User Tracks. Step two is to pick the style and tempo you want to record and also give your user track a name. To give the user track a name, simply rename this folder from Pop User Tracks One Minute Template to whatever you want your user track to be named. In my case, I'll call it Pop Ukulele. Now, I'm going to record just a very simple ukulele user track to show you that you can make user tracks quickly and easily, whether you're playing a very simple part, which is what I'll do here, or a more complex part if you want to. Whatever musical level you're at, you can make user tracks. If I look in this folder, you can see that it contains two files, song1mpop1.sgu and song1mpop1.pdf. The SGU is a band in a box song file, and the PDF is a chord chart that you can print out, just in case you aren't right in front of your computer when you're recording. So next we open the file song1mpop1 in band in a box. It will, by default, have a pop style set to 120 beats per minute, but you can change this to whatever band in a box style you like at whatever tempo. It's easy to find the style you want to do by going into the style picker and just double clicking on styles to sample what they'll sound like. For example, if you wanted to make a hard rock user track, you could pick a style like this to record along to.
Or if you wanted to make a bluegrass user track, you could pick a style like this to record along to. If you want to make a jazz user track, you could pick a style like this to record along to. But we have a different template for jazz that uses keys and chord progressions that are more common in jazz. We have another video, How to Make a Jazz Band in a Box User Track, as well, that you can check out. But for me, I'll stick with the pop style at 120 beats per minute in the template. Let's listen to a little bit of that style playing over these chords. The other thing you can do before recording is print out the PDF that's also in that folder. If you're recording in Band in a Box or Real Band, the chords display on the screen as you're playing them but you might like to actually have a physical copy of the chart in front of you as well. You can see that there are major chords, minor chords, and dominant seventh chords. And it's in the key of C for eight bars, then E for eight bars, then G, and then A. Once I record this short chart, I'll have enough material for a working user track style. So I'm at the third step, which means I'm now ready to record. If you're recording with a microphone, you should be wearing headphones to make sure the backing tracks don't bleed into the mic. You want the resulting recording to only have your instrument on it. If, like I'm doing here, you are plugged directly in, for example, an electric guitar, bass, or keyboard, you don't have to worry about that. So I'll start recording. Okay, the recording is finished, and if I wanted to go back and fix certain parts, if I wasn't happy with some of the bars, I could do that with punch in record. But I'll keep what I've got here for now. So step four is to make sure the files are all where they're supposed to be. I now have my ukulele recorded on the audio track. I'll listen back to a bit of it. And here it is solo. So I simply save my song, and you can see that now in that pop ukulele folder, in addition to the band in a box SGU file and the PDF file that were there before, I now also have an audio file with the same name. It's important that the WAV file and the SGU file have exactly the same name, apart from the file extension, uh, which they do if you record it in this way. And that's it. I've now made a brand new ukulele user track. And now for the cool part. Step five is actually using the user track. I'll press new to get a blank song. As I mentioned before, the template song had chords in the key of C, E, G, and A, but you can enter songs in any key. So I'll set the key to G minor and I'll start entering some chords. G minor and C minor at bar three an F7, I'll do those four bars again. And here I'll enter some bars with two chords to a bar. B flat, F7, E flat, F7, repeat that. C minor, C7, F7, 
and then E flat and F7. And I'll repeat all of those bars to fill out the song. Now I've got the same style loaded that I used to record this user track, so I'll leave that loaded and I'll add my user track to this song. Because I made the pop ukulele folder and it has the band in a box SGU file and the WAV file I recorded, that now appears as an option here. So I pick the track I wanted on, strings, and I select my new user track. I press play. And now I'm hearing the user track I recorded playing over these completely different changes. And of course, you're not limited to using the user track just with this band. I'll pick a different style, say, Island Pop, so you can hear it in a different context. And here now is my ukulele user track playing with a completely different combo. you can change the tempo to whatever you like. So you see, in less than 10 minutes I was able to go from scratch to a working user track and I was even able to test it out with different combos. You may be wondering what happens when you enter chord types that you didn't actually record. In those cases, Band in a Box finds the closest substitute. For example, if I change the first chord to G minor 11, it will just play a G minor chord. This isn't a bad substitution since there are no conflicting notes. If I was to change the second bar to D diminished, it would instead play a D minor, which isn't as great since there are conflicting notes, A and A flat. Let's listen to that now that I've made those changes. If you want to fix this, you can simply record more material, either by adding material from our other templates, or making your own custom charts. You simply need to add more SGU and WAV files to this folder, and that material automatically gets added to the user track. If you want to save hard drive space, you can also convert the waves to WMAs, and it will work exactly the same. In addition to adding chord types, recording more material also enhances your user track by just having more recorded material to make your user track have more variety from bar to bar. You'll be amazed at how quickly you can get your own user track working in Band in a Box with this simple method that I've shown you. You can also change the name of the user tracks very easily. All you have to do is rename the folder. I called mine Pop Ukulele, but if I wanted it to follow the same naming convention as other user tracks and real tracks, I could name it with the instrument name first, Ukulele, then the type, Rhythm, as opposed to finger picking, background, etc. Then a descriptive name, say Pop Syncopated, since I often play on the and of two but not on beat three. Tobin, since Tobin is my name. Eve 120 for even eighths at 120 beats per minute. Here are some other things about the contents of this folder. You may notice that in addition to the PDF, SGU, and WAV files, there are now some other files that have automatically been added. Band in a Box creates these files the first time you use any user track. The BT1 and BT2 files should be left there, but you don't need to worry about them at all. They're written once, and from then on they just make the user tracks generate a little more quickly. If you did remove them for any reason, Band in a Box would just rewrite them the next time, so it wouldn't be a big deal. Options.txt can be edited by you. It just contains some information about the user track, such as a bass tempo for the style, whether it's a waltz, what the equivalent MIDI patch would be, 
and whether it's even or swing. Most of this information is taken from the ban in a box file, so you likely don't even need to worry about this file at all, but you can change this if you like simply by editing and then saving this file. An interesting thing about the tempo is that if you're using multiple files for a single user track, the files can actually be different tempos and it will still work. But in general, it would be best to record all files for any particular user track at the same tempo, for consistency. Memo.txt has the memo for this style. So for example, if I change this and type in simple strumming pop ukulele with slight syncopation, ukulele was recorded using direct input. Then when I go back into Band in a Box, first we can see that it's got my new name, and we can also see this memo. For more information on making user tracks, you can go to www.pgmusic.com slash usertracks1.htm. There are more template options here, as well as further tutorials for more advanced user tracks creation. For more information in general about Band in a Box, visit www.pgmusic.com or www.bandinabox.com. Have fun!